What's going on, my fellow Killjoys? Killjoys Drummer here, and today bringing a deck tech that I probably, I think I promised like a month ago or something like that. I don't even know. But it's finally here. Um, I've been way interested in the Pokemon trading card game, which is why I haven't actually done anything mostly on Magic. Uh, but today I actually have a deck tech for Magic. Now, this is an Atarka Red deck. This is the deck, um, uh, actually, a previous the previous deck tech I had in Magic was an Abzan Megamorph, Abzan Aggro kind of variant deck that I took to a local preliminary PTQ, got third with. This is what my uh, my friend Griffin, uh, Lightbird, he's the one that uh, I did the commentary with in the past few videos. Um, this is the deck that he took to that tournament and got fourth with. So we got third and fourth, and then um, you know I could probably do a deck tech on the first place deck, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I liked it a lot. Definitely kind of smashed our meta, but... Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into this deck right here. So basically, Atarka Red, you know, it's like a mono red variant. The main strategy of it is just to beat face. So uh, we're going to do that right now. We're going to look at a few cards. Like, first of all, we have uh, four Foundry Street Denizen. Now, this card's pretty cool. It says, whenever another red creature enters the battlefield, under your control, Foundry Street uh, will get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So this can actually add up really quickly if you have a Goblin Rabble Master. So on turn three, if you have a Goblin Rabble Master... You can play your Goblin Rabble Master, trigger on the Foundry Street, token trigger on the Goblin, to uh, trigger on the Foundry, so then you're swinging for three right there. Pretty cool. Uh, this is also pretty cool with Lightning Berserker, the Foundry Street trigger, uh, because you can just dash um, ah, and then possibly pump. Uh, just a lot of cool things you can do with Lightning Berserker. You know, he's only a one of because in the late game you can actually just dash him, sink all your mana, and just you know swing. Basically, you're just like, oh, you want to trade your Rhino? That's cool. If you don't, then you're dead. <laughs> So definitely some cool versatility with Lightning Berserker. Uh, the, one of the best things to do in this deck, in my opinion, is to go turn one Foundry Street and turn two Dash and Mordu Scout. Uh, so then you're swinging for five on turn two. It's fantastic. Uh, another great thing, you know, Mono Switch Switch Spear. Every single Mono Red variant or any sort of aggressive variant in Standard, Modern, and Legacy plays four of this Mono Switch Spear because it's such a very fantastic card. Prowess is an enormous factor on this card, so definitely a cool card. And then lastly for the creatures, we have two Zergo Bell Striker. Just a pretty solid card. It's your worst one drop in the deck, I feel. Um, but it can also be pretty cool with the dash to dodge sorcery speed removal. And, uh, you know, it's a 2-2 two -two for one, so you can't really complain with that. Next, we're going to go ahead and go to the instance. We have three Atarkas Command. Uh, the reason he ran three is because he couldn't actually obtain a fourth one. But that's okay, we're going to get to what we substituted for the 4th of Tarkus Command here in a minute. So Tarkus Command says, uh, choose 2. Your opponent, your opponents can't gain life this turn. Uh, deals 3 damage to each opponent. Put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. And creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 and gain reach until the turn. So the most relevant 2 modes on this card would be a Tarkus Command deals 3 damage. And your creatures get plus 1, plus 1. Reach, completely irrelevant. But the plus 1, plus 1 is really cool. Uh, because you can, um, you know, use your Tarkus command, uh, be like, alright, shoot you in the face for three, and then I'm going to give my Monastery Swift Spear plus one, plus one, as, as well as my Rabble Master plus one, plus one, and a token that's swinging plus one, plus one, you know, lots of damage, and then the trigger on the prowess for lots of, for Swift Spear, definitely a lot of damage there, so Tarkus command is probably the best card in the deck, that, which is why it's called the Tarkus Red. You splash blue for that, and this next card, become immense. So, late in the game, you're going to be using a lot of burn spells, which we'll get to in a minute. And it actually is just kind of pointless to have them sit in your graveyard. So why not run a one of become immense? Uh, just give, just like, all right, swing for one with Foundry Street, uh, block with Rhino. Well, become immense. I'm gonna delve five, play my become immense, and have my Foundry Street just take steroids real quick and just completely dominate your Rhino. Or it's just a game finisher because I mean, before not many people expected this, but now everybody's expecting a one of become immense in these kind of decks. But yeah, really cool card, and yeah. So next we have two Lightning Strike. I actually, um, Griffin just decided to play two. I'm actually not sure why it's not four. I guess we want, we need to cut some cards for other things. Uh, but definitely, you know, really good card. Two mana deal three. Great card. Uh, he also main deck three Searing Blood. Now, this is very clever. Just, uh, with the meta that we had, there's a lot of aggressive decks, a lot of Abzan decks. So, Searing Blood could help finish off a Rhino or just, you know, kill a little creature and deal three. Fantastic in the mirror match because no other mono red deck I've ever seen main deck searing blood. So he can just um, in the mirror match win game one because of this simple card. Even win a game one against an Abzan deck because they're gonna you know he, they're gonna block with their Rhino, finish it off with searing blood, deal the extra three, and it's just a really great card. 
Next we have uh, definitely one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, Stoke the Flames, Convoke, 4 mana, deal 4. Just a fantastic card. Uh, really, really good burn spell. Four of those in the deck. And then we have three Wild Slash, one mana, deal two. And then I guess if the Ferocious is really that relevant in this deck, it's probably not. But just kind of your shock right now in the format. Really good card. Now, this is the card that we actually substituted for the fourth Atarkus Command since we couldn't find a fourth Atarkus Command. Uh, we have one Titanic Growth. So it's two mana. Target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Another way to help uh, kill a Rhino if they're going to block. I keep bringing up Rhino, but Rhino is such a huge problem for this deck that really this deck needs any way it possibly can to uh, deal with the Rhino. Uh, but also another finisher. So our fin our fantastic finishers in this deck would be Titanic Growth, Become Immense, and a Tarkus Command. So yeah, those are the instants. Really, really big part of the deck. Probably the most important part of the deck are the instants. But yeah, next we're going to go, go ahead and go to the Sorceries. Just two Hordling Outbursts is the only Sorceries. Uh, Hordling Outbursts is just a good card. He actually insisted on not playing it before, but I I mean, you, you if you're playing Mono Red, you probably just have to play Hordling Outburst. Um, and then he realized, hey, synergy between Foundry Street and Hordling Outburst. Yeah, because if you can do turn two Foundry, or turn one Foundry, turn two Scout, dash it, swing for five, then turn three, Hordling Outburst, swing for four with Foundry Street, and then next turn, uh, dash Marty Scout again, you're doing way too much damage. <laughs> uh, it's just ridiculous, but yeah. So then we're going to go ahead and go to the one main deck outpost siege. Basically, you're always going to choose cons. Uh, you sometimes might choose dragons. Most of the time, you're just going to choose cons, though, just for the card advantage. Uh, dragons can help if they're on a very low life total, uh, because it forces them. Uh, it's going to keep dealing damage to them. So Outpost Siege is just a really good card, and yes. So because of the fact that we do have Outpost Siege, um, he's running 22 land rather than 21. I think you could probably still get away with 21 in this deck, but 22 is fine. He has 2 Forest, 15 Mountains, 1 Temple of Abandon, and 4 Wooded Foothills. So lastly, we're going to go ahead and go over the sideboard here. We have 2 Destructive Rev Revelries. Uh, you can't see the mana cost. Uh, it's, one, it's 1 Red, 1 Green. It's an instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. Destructive revelry deals two damage to target or to that permanent's controller. So really cool to help basically just say, hey, kill your Corsair Crucifix and deal two damage to you. Uh, it's a really good card. Love this card. Uh, I would actually encourage if you're playing this deck to play three or four in the sideboard. The card's just that good. Two Hall of Triumph. Uh, I'm actually not really sure what this matchup would be for. I suppose the Abzan matchup to help get over and also the mirror matchup so yeah so it's not bad uh hall of triumph you know choose a color cho creatures you control you control with a chosen color get plus one plus one pretty cool uh extra outpost siege for the really the control matchup um to help card advantage and especially it's just nice to have the extra outpost siege in the control matchup uh two running volley specifically for um dragon lord ojitai because this deck actually doesn't exactly have the best ways to deal with Dragonlord Ojutai either. So, Dragonlord or er, Rendering Volley is really, really good against Dragonlord Ojutai. Uh, for whenever they're just like, okay, declare attacks, one mana Rending Volley, kill your um, Dragonlord Ojutai. It's really good. Three Roast, uh, just easily for the mid range and abs and aggro matchups. Just Roast is a really good card. Um, now, I wish it just said five damage in general. Uh, this way, this deck would have even more ways to deal with Dragonlord Ojutai, but. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, there's three Scouring Sands. This is specifically for the mirror match. Scouring Sands deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control. Scry one. Uh, this can also be for a tokens matchup, so really Scouring Sands is actually pretty cool. And I like having three in the sideboard. Now we're gonna go with this last card. This is also the reason why there's 22 lands in the deck. Uh, two Stormbirth Dragon. It has It's a three colorless and two red cost, so really, really high cost in this uh, kind of deck. But uh, here it's great effects. <laughs> As flying haste and has protection from white, it is a 4-4, four, four. and the monstrosity for 7 mana, which you're probably not going to come up that much, but if it does, uh, Stormbirth Dragon becomes monstrous, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. So Stormbirth Dragon is basically really, really good in the late game, and it's especially good against the control matchups and the Abzan matchups. So yeah, this is the deck that my friend uh, Lightbird, I suppose, um got fourth with at our local pptq so thanks for watching guys uh you know awkward outro i'll figure something out if not probably just gonna keep saying awkward outro not a bad idea <laughs> uh if you enjoyed the deck leave a comment leave a like all that good stuff and i'll see you guys next time later